breaks. I am also here. Terrence. <laughs> I am here before he said that. And Jeff. Yep. And Mahogany. 59 seconds. Why in the world would you edit that so that I said it before Terrence? That doesn't make any sense, Toker. Well, it doesn't. Bad edit. Just the bad edit. That weird edit you did? Did I do a weird edit? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hey. see what you're doing. We're doing a bit. <laughs> I'm trying to hide my own embarrassment. As usual, <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard uh, to hide your embarrassment when it's giant. Well, yeah. no. Oh. That's yeah. what my parents said about me. <laughs> so if you had to lift, if you had to do lift, Mahogany's done it. Franks is about to do lift for, for a living. Um, and we've decided he's going to keep animal pamphlets in the back of, of animal animal penis pamphlets in the back from the reads and have to talk to them. Animal reproduction facts, not just penises. Hand drawn Hand by drawn. your driver. On Applebee's napkins. I mean, if you didn't Why know what Applebee's, because they have a little print that says Applebee's on. Oh, so, so does Chili's. Know, they're from Applebee's. God, if you if if I was a Lyft driver, you would have the privilege of uh, listening to me listen to me because I listen to a lot of my own uh, recordings <laughs> and uh, a plethora of of napkins from all over. Uh, because I get I get the runny noses, and I like to make sure I have napkins handy. So uh, even when I go to a gas station and I don't get food, sometimes I'll just grab a handful of their napkins and take to the car, so I can wipe my nose. You make your car sound real snotty. I mean, it's not, but I am, and I'm in it. So I guess when I'm in the car, it's snotty. Yeah, there's I a used to snot level increases when he's inside. Yeah, I work for a janitorial supply company. Uh, two jobs ago now and um they had damaged paper towel rolls like the big uh, paper towel dispenser rolls yeah like in, in public bathrooms and stuff yeah yeah and i just took one and i keep it in my car now that's the worst for... thing to blow your nose on I mean, <laughs> it, it's not great yeah yeah it's, like, it's, really good. <laughs> it's really good for cleaning your windshield yeah because mm. those paper towels don't absorb they knock the water away from things they touch. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. the problem. <laughs> well, it's perfect for, for what I use it for. You know, yeah, don't tell us. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. I'm the person that, like, will pull into the gas station and see that they've got some of those blue oh, yeah. papers. Oh, the plastic. <laughs> well, the the, well, no, no, the ones for, like, when you're cleaning your windshield. And they've uh, got the like they've got the shitty hand paper towels that sometimes they put out there, but then they'll put like the blue ones mm, that are actually shop towels. For, yeah. I'll I'll steal them. <laughs> steal them all. It's like a paper I'll take shaman. like half the stack and put it. I in can't the tell how many free squeegees I found just laying in a soapy bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just lucky. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> this fucking yard sale every Saturday is just a just a whole bunch of squeegees from gas stations and he's trying to pawn off on <laughs> this one's got gate written on it this one says 7-eleven this one's circle k yeah. all different brands <laughs> this one's just yeah says, but that's do not from steal. being out there driving all the time having to keep my windshield clean mm -hmm. and half the gas stations didn't have any probably because people like me so that's why i had to have my own People like me. You can buy a roll of those shop towels. Those uh, yeah. paper chamois. They're they're great. They're or, expensive. I buy my own too. You can get a sham. But, wow. Mm, <laughs> I actually own two sham wows, and I've never used them in any of the ways that I've seen on that infomercial. <laughs> they were just. <laughs> yeah. I can't hear sham wow without thinking of Djibouti dubs. <laughs> where he redubs all the ShamWow commercials. <laughs> It'll even mm. get off Dolphin Jizz. Like, it's just so <laughs> random. <laughs> Was Djibouti dubs the same one that did the X-Men dubs? I don't know. They do a lot of dubs. But the ones I remember were a lot of, like, infomercials that redubbed. Huh? 
Like the juggernaut bitch thing? Yeah. Oh, no, no that's bitch, not the bitch, same. Bitch, don't you know who I am? I'm the juggernaut I'm bitch. The juggernaut bitch. I think that was just some bored kids when it's supposed to be hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it, it worked. I have laughed at that for, Jesus, 20, 20 years now. <laughs> Probably and longer. And then pointedly not laughed at it when they did the joke in the X-Men 3 movie. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah. man. But maybe that joke isn't as funny as I thought. <laughs> no, I need to reassess my life. It's <laughs> not funny when it's popular. Yeah, yeah. As soon as a corporation, you know, picks up a trend, it's no longer cool. I'm Come the on. juggernaut bitch, and I love Pepsi. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> okay, well, that's a. Uh, it's weird. It's a cartoon. That's what makes it funny. Is a cartoon swearing? Yeah, like a uh, some guy in a bad helmet. Yeah. Like I, I will watch um, a show where children get killed. Uh, Euphoria, Utopia, and um, I'm like unfazed by it. I watch an anime where children get killed, and it hurts my heart. And I think that means there's something wrong with me. I, I want you. I want to. I want to call your attention to the message board. You see. You see what Kevin posted there. I fucking mm-hmm. was right. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Uh we're, we're we're planning the um nerd bowl. Uh 2024. Jeff, Jeff, you're 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 invited. Um and I for this one is instead of building a big dungeon and me having to DM the whole time, I figured everybody just pick a CR10 monster or enough monsters to make a CR10 encounter and we would do like a bracket style monster mash, monster brawl, arena fight. So two people could go up there and have their their monsters fight while the rest of us eat and watch shitty movies, and then we could just rotate until a winner is chosen. And I went with these rules. It was like uh, the CR ten, uh, th- three monster maximum. So if you want three monsters to equal CR ten, that's fine. Um, five rounds, Pathfinder one e monsters. We're going to use just an open terrain thing in there, so it's going to be one inch equals five feet. We'll just use rulers. That way it's not slow on the grid. And if people are like, sounds cool. Hell yeah. Uh, Terrence says, I predict everyone bringing the exact same monster. And then when we got in the chat here, uh, Terrence said, uh, you should say no incorporeals because that's going to be awful and boring mm. and take forever. And I said, no incorporeals. And then Kevin was the first one to say, well, there goes my plan A. <laughs> so somebody <laughs> was planted to bring just an awful incorporeal monster. To this month. Yeah, it's all gonna be uh, undead shadows. All gonna be undead shadows. That's what I was gonna do. <laughs> yeah, but see, are undead shadows good at killing things? Uh, uh, well, get your strength your... down to zero. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you reduce your strength down to zero, you become an undead shadow under their your their control. So yeah, it kills them. Because I was looking at uh, I'll, I'll spoil it for y'all here. I was looking at color out of space. It's a it's a CR ten monster. And I feel like it would be very survivable in five rounds against just about anything, but I don't feel like it's killy enough. Mm. Like, against a, a party of six-level adventurers, yes, but against another CR-10 monster, I don't think it would be able to kill the monster in five rounds, but I also don't know many things that would be able to kill it fast enough. Well, does just have a shitload of hit points, or...? Hit points, and it's just it's it's got a bunch of fucking weird resistances, and it can fucking feed and heal itself, and there's just a lot going on with it, but not a lot of it is like damage output, you know. What's a CR for an undead golem? Play golem, golem, play golem is CR ten. So I think that oh, okay. was, I think that's below it. I think you could do flesh. Golem. I don't think you can do an undead golem. You'd have to be alive first. <laughs> well, I mean, I meant I meant flesh golem. Yeah. Oh, F- Flesh Golem, what is that? CR7, CR8, anyway. Somewhere, I mean, we had one in our in our game. We Goalie! Went, we went, Goalie was a uh, Flesh Golem. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was an unholy Flesh Golem. He had the uh, temple on him. So, he Flesh was Golem, unholy. giant crawling hand. Boom. Boom. There you go. You gonna come down for this? I don't know yet. I gotta figure out how my finances look after I start. I was like, oh, you're gonna ask your boss? Being a yeah. freelance tax. You'll driver. be here. You'll you'll be here. It'll you be can good. work on the way here. You're yeah. lifting. Yeah, <laughs> I thought about that actually. I thought about 
like tracking a uh, making a path. lifting your way across the states, <laughs> lifting my way across the states. It's the reverse of a high uh, uh, hitchhiker. I'm reverse you're like, hitchhiking. <laughs> like an impromptu road trip. Only you don't know the people you're riding with, and they don't know you're on a road trip. So. <laughs> Jeff, just before we get into the game, do do you have any? Are you coming to Nerd Bowl? And if if so, or if not, where where are you at with the rules that I've laid out? Where, you're a game breaking kind of person, so I don't want to waste my time. Ooh. Oh, oh. Well, let me let me phrase it. I will Fuck probably still guys. come, <laughs> but trying to come up with the monsters that I would need would take too much time and effort. I think it'd be easier than making a character. Oh, no. God, no. Not yeah. for me, no. Yeah, like just no. picking his ER-10 worth of monsters to throw at another no, person? He's, he's got to throw templates on it. He's got to do the math to determine if this zombie is an explodey zombie or if it's a bloody zombie. Hmm. I would definitely want to throw a template on it. Yeah. Well, that's what I asked about. Like, if, if 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 it's legal, you said, okay. Yeah. As long as it apparently doesn't make it incorporeal. No incorporeal. <laughs> no incorporeal templates. Technically, you said don't pick an incorporeal creature, and I didn't. I put an incorporeal <laughs> template on said uh, golem. No. That, that's what I would pull. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that's why I'm asking you. You're the guy who, when there was a everybody make a 20th level character, you showed up with a 21st level character because the rules. Yeah. So you're the night you're the nightmare scenario of nitpickers. <laughs> just if, if something comes out to you like a rule, I should throw in there. Just to, if you'd let me know, I'd, I'd like to know that your brain's on it. Also, I'll, you're, I'll, you're invited even, about it, even if you don't want to play. You're invited to come eat and oh, you can, or out. you can or you could be the judge. Oh, oh, that yeah, that's kind of cool. Judge Jeff, <laughs> you know, you know what I just found. Oh, that's a that's second edition. That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the See, other archive of Nethys. The reason why this is harder for me than uh, making a character is because too many options again, and so many things to learn. No, yeah. just. The thing is, is that like winning doesn't matter, um, right? So you just right. go. That looks cool. It's CR ten. Boom. That's my. That's my thing. Yeah. Or, See, I guess if you can just like have fun with stuff, <laughs> <laughs> if you have the ability to have fun. Yeah. I guess the biggest, the biggest trick I could think of would be um, <laughs> mindless. Um. If I was going to create a creature that if I knew almost everybody was coming in with some kind of like intelligent creature or something along that line that could be affected by mind affecting, then you'd want some kind of mind affecting spell that could, um, creature that can charm or control creatures. Because mm, if you can control them, then you oh, can yeah. screw them over. Now yeah. you have control mm -hmm. over them. You put hazards on the field, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, are you going to put hazards on the field? I mean that's why that's why I was asking for thoughts. Yeah, I think I you should definitely hazards put on the field. hazards like, on the field. Difficult terrain, damage. Boiling terrain. lava. And this is one on one. This is not a, like a battle royale. Yeah, no, it'd be, deal. Be, okay. yeah. it'd be like Terrence versus Mahogany, round one. So you uh -huh. Terrence throws up his monsters, you throw up your monsters. I the, think that it'll be the same starting, you know, like y'all can flip a coin who gets to pick which side, but there'll, there'll be equal sides of the map. Uh, you know, I'm thinking. 60 feet apart, you know. What I was moves. looking at was a uh, pestilent zombie swarm. Uh huh. Uh, it's CR9. There you go. <laughs> but it's <laughs> second edition. Mm. Also, it's more than three creatures. No, it's one creature. Oh. One swarm. <laughs> it's one swarm. swarm. It's a wolf swarm. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. But here's the problem with your, your swarm. Can it fly? Does it have ranged attacks? So if you go up against a creature that has fly and a ranged yep. weapon, you'll die. Like, I will definitely have that on my side. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's why I was like, it's just an open field. So flying is going to be like the big thing you can think about. It. Or at least have something that has a ranged attack. It's a fun thing to talk about. I didn't mean that I don't, I, you know, we could play Starfinder. Or we could talk about <laughs> monster <laughs> encounters for the next hour and a half. 
All right. Well, let's start on the Starfinder then before Jeff uh, rage quits on us. I don't think he would rage quit. I think he would apathy quit. <laughs> no comment. The, the net effect is the same. Um, yeah. yeah. All Jeff right, would so, hang out and talk nerd uh, monster encounters, I think, and be pleased. Am I wrong? It, it, it gives me, a, I still get to feel a little bit of dip of my role-playing. Yeah. It's nerd-related. We're not sitting here talking about... It's theoretical <laughs> It's theoretical um, RPG. RPG yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. nerd theory. Everybody Under loves nerd theory. theory. <laughs> hmm Sorry, uh, we need to we need to like uh, hog time Matt Pat and let him get do like some promos for us. You think we can get that happening? I don't know who that is. I don't like, know. He's He's huh? Yeah, I know. We need to catch him before he goes. Like, <laughs> well, I for one am not. Uh, I don't endorse uh, kidnapping or felony behaviors of any means uh, in front <laughs> I of the <do>. camera. <laughs> uh, I don't, but Weepskeep does. <laughs> And on that note, <clears throat> Raiders of the Lark 2.0 begins as six hours later, you roll up to what you can see outside the dome, even through the swirl or outside the window of the transport, even through the swirling um, sand of the endless storms that rack the planet of Bonacon 2. A massive uh, metal dome. Uh, it's its walls approach and um, its heights basically engulf the entirety of your vision as you are rolling up to what from the distance you start at appears to be just a little black square along the side of its bottom which turns into a massive door open doorway that the transport rolls into there's room enough for at least three of these large transports that you have been um, both riding on and defending in the course of your travels here. And after it, you come to a stop inside, you can see the um, the light inside of it disappearing as uh, a door, a massive door is closing behind you. Then lights begin to flicker on, and then the captain of the transport turns to you and says, well, we're here. Ooh, I didn't. I didn't think we were gonna make it. Yes, that was a bit touch and go there for a little while. I, yeah, uh, this old this old bird's seen uh, better days. He he uh, pats the side of his transport, and you can hear like sparks going off in a nearby panel. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, head to the decontamination area before we uh, anything gets worse in here. That is a good plan. Do you have um, mechanic droids to uh, fix the damage? Oh, yeah, they'll be out in a bit. Let's just get out. Uh, everybody, get your gear. Come on. The uh, the captain and the various uh, crew members that were on their way here gather their bags and things. The robots uh, who have been, like, silently running the actual driving portion of, of your trip uh, disengage themselves from the cockpits and stand and begin to follow the captain out. Ooh. These robots are um, old things. They are primitive. They have one function, basically. And when they follow him out, he's like, we need to get these two refurbed uh, and recharged. Uh, the, in case the, uh, the rogue house sends more troops, how defensible is this dome? Well, I mean, uh, on some instructional vids I saw, they say it can extend, it can uh, extend, uh, it, it withstand a nuclear blast. I don't know what that Ooh. means. <laughs> Good. I doubt that that would be necessary. Uh, uh, minor houses like this that uh, attempting coups of this nature tend to. Um, Higher, just bottom of the barrel mercenaries. So we may not even have to deal with it. I'm just wanting to be too prepared so that I can, me and my team can protect you from something that is not your fault. 
Oh, that reminds me. He um he put, he reaches behind his seat and, and lashes on like um a belt with a um a holstered old timey blaster. And he pulls it out and says, All right, uh you are under arrest. No, I'm not. Just work with me here. Come on. I just want to get out of here, man. How about this? How about we allow you to arrest us on the way back? <laughs> you let us accomplish what it is that we're here to do. Uh-huh. And then we will gladly turn ourselves over into your authority on the trip back. And um, I will look and make sure that the rest of my team knows that I am full of shit. I cannot do that, he says. And you see him give like a very obvious wink. It's like, you are definitely under arrest and I am not disobeying direct orders from the marshal. Uh, then yes, we are under arrest. All I'm right, just, march on. <laughs> we submit ourselves to your authority. Good. Wink uh, back. <clears throat> uh, Marcus... <laughs> trots up as well. Am I under arrest too? I've never been under arrest before. You know, uh, a criminal record, I think, would really get me a lot of chicks. What do you think? I believe all you have to do to get chicks is to be in the neighborhood and yeah. respond yeah. to the yowls. <laughs> yeah. God, who was the be comedian on. that said, wouldn't it be awesome to be a, a, to, like cats where like if you're horny, you could just yell that? And other horny, horny. <laughs> <laughs> other horny things will respond. Me too, and then you can just meet. <laughs> Call it Grinder, Toker. <laughs> oh, I thought Grinder kind of merged into Tinder, and all everybody's just happily fucking on that app now. Am I wrong? Am I forty? I I'm out of touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mostly it's just scams these days. Mm -hmm. Have you been scammed by Tinder or Grinder people? <laughs> Uh, the the only time I ever attempted an online dating was uh, plenty of fish, and it was a setup to get mugged. Oh, what? Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yep. The the lady on the app said to meet at a uh, a fire station that was near her house because her car was out of commission. I get to the fire station and it is completely abandoned. Um. And uh, when I say, okay, I'm here, still naive, naivety just pouring out of my ears. She's like, oh, okay, do you think you can help me out with $75? I was <laughs> like, are you asking me for money before we go to lunch at Waffle House? Is that, that wasn't what's getting happening? Mugged. That was okay. <laughs> that, that's the start yeah, of the like, story. He's not done. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm about to take you to Waffle House, bitch. You think I got seventy five dollars? Yeah. Just be throwing out on dates. Waffle House was the agreed upon location. Yeah. Like it wasn't my suggestion. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sitting there afterwards. I'm like, no, I'm not interested in anymore. I've driven an hour out of my way. Mm. No, thank you. I'm, I'm calling this quits. Have a great life. And I sit there and I'm waiting, just processing how fucking stupid I am to have gone through this far with this whole farce. And um, I step out of my truck to smoke a cigarette and I see somebody walking from the, uh, from the trailer park that I was parked in front of, which was apparently where she lived. And they're eyeballing me real hard until I step out from behind my truck and then they just beeline it a different direction. They go perpendicular away from me. <laughs> you can't convince me that that dude wasn't coming to rob me. Uh, that was her pimp. Wait a minute, Probably. he ran away from you or towards yes. you? I'm a really big dude, Mahogany. Oh, he was yeah. not a big that dude. Is, that is I true. Think, <laughs> I think Jeff has the right of it. I think her pimp was about to try and strong arm you into giving mm -hmm. the money after breaking the date, the I think, appointment. I think you're probably right, but uh, <laughs> yeah, because he was he was coming at me at a pace until I stepped out from behind my truck, and this was when I was working out and I was working a physical job, and I looked pretty, pretty beefy. <laughs> beefy. 
Yeah. Can't, well, can't convince me that that wasn't an attempt. <laughs> it, was a, it was a charming story. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I digress. Boy, do ya. <laughs> These are the stories I'll tell in my lift rides. <laughs> <laughs> that'll get me the tips yeah talk well, about picking up strangers that is the whole job you're going into <laughs> that is a, that will certainly get you reviews i cannot attest to what they will be <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway the uh the captain who by this time you guys have learned his name uh over the course of your many multi-hour drive uh he is a uh, Captain Kidder, a transport oh, pilot. Kidder, <laughs> what a kidder! Yes. And um, as he escorts you, quote unquote, out uh, into the decontamination area, you can see all the other um, people are standing in the same like uh, chamber. And when he brings you guys through, and the robots, and everybody else, and it closes, you can uh, feel sort of a. Um, a, a warming sensation and then a, a sudden loud vacuuming sound as the atmosphere is quickly cycled through and then you get that cycle of ex experience at least three more times strange warming sensation all the air sucked out fresh air in until finally uh, after about five minutes of waiting the doors to the interior of the dome opens and when, when you step out into the dome, um, through the narrow corridor beyond, you can see what appears to be um, a vast, glorious, sun-dappled forest under the dome. Hmm. A small hovering vehicle uh, shows up about that time, and a robot steps out. This one appears to be a bit more elaborate, a bit more... Um, a, a bit more sophisticated, kind of like Doc back in the city, only its uh, multiple arms are, aren't bristling with medical gear. They seem to be bristling with um, uh, gardening equipment. Hmm. Hello, I'm Environmental Dome Overseer 6R33N. Has Captain Kidder managed to take you into custody? I've been... A, I've been ordered to make sure that you are well treated but detained captain kid uh captain kidder walks up and says yes sir got him right here he uh sticks his hand on the back and turns toward the uh towards the group and says you can count on me my friend and then you see um uh, environmental dome overseer 6r339 just sag as all the power goes out of him <laughs> And there you see Kidder holding uh, a piece of equipment that was um, apparently from his inner working. He's like, all right. <laughs> the smile crosses my face. Now, I cannot keep the overseer down for too long. There's a lot of work that goes on here that we need him for, but I'm going to edit these things out. Now, unfortunately for y'all, uh, the grav cycles on top of that thing are now stuck in the cleaning cycle so That's he points funny. to a large pen uh about 200 yards away where you see a number of um creatures grazing and pecking at the ground very large-ish kind of it looks like someone extrapolated chi uh chizzards to the the prehistoric level hmm. <laughs> the return Both of the chizzard both both feathered and scaled. Um, I think those are mountable. Uh, he says, you're going to have to cross the dome on those babies. Those are grists. Uh, but before you go, he um, tosses you his headpiece again and says, uh, or, or rather, he presses a button on his headpiece and tosses it to you. Uh, the marshal wants to speak to you. I do it quick. It doesn't sound like he's having a good day. Go ahead, Marshall. All right. You put it back in. You put the earpiece back in. And um, the, the the thing is black for a moment. And then you hear a voice of the Marshal says, Of course, my lord. Absolutely. One more thing before I go. Uh, <clears throat> I'm an old man, sir. I need to 
to the head before we go out. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. A moment later, the, the screen appears, and you can see um, the marshal's face being lit by the interior of his power armor helmet. He's like, we don't have a lot of time for this, but I need you to convince me that what you're doing here is not something that's going to fuck things up for me. Well, the best that I can do is tell you that as soon as we um, accomplish our collection of the sample, we will be convincingly enough escaped from your deputy's care without harming him without doing any damage to your facilities we will be on our way and you can be none the wiser he says uh oh, well the problem is there is you're not anywhere near the sample it's the whole other dome away thankfully for you there's an underground um, passage at the far end of the dome you're in. He brings up a map and point <laughs> and, and quickly points out to you, like, this is uh, an environmental dome where they're testing to see which which uh, plant life would be best suited to the environment after the full conversion. This is a fully converted environment you're in. A really valuable testing space. Yes, we will pass right through, um, causing no harm to fauna or flora, uh, at least minimal harm, as minimal as possible. Right. And uh, you just tell them that uh, we are here in this dome oh. until you find out that we're not. The screen goes black for a moment and you hear him sound, sound out. Well, I don't know. Uh, tell him to get the second transport going for... What was his name? Count Demelmark? Fuck, I don't know. Uh, his visage appears and says, like, we are coming after you. Now, I don't want to be the one that has to show up and have to fight you folks. That is not what I came out here to do. I came out here to retire and help people. I am trying to be a better goddamn person now that I am free of Imperial programming. I understand that completely, and I sympathize. And uh, I will do my best to, we will do our best to not put you in a position where we have to fight to the death, or, or to the capture, or to whatever Dimmelmark is telling you he wants us for. Are we at all familiar with Dimmelmark, the name? The name, the name is, the name is familiar to you, but... <laughs> It's familiar from an odd place from your perspective. The name ca came up during the um, came up during the simulations that you guys were trapped. Yeah, in. he was the yeah. wizard. Yeah, he's like this Demomark guy is very insistent that he speak to one of you, <laughs> to your doctor in particular. I will relay that information. Do you want to speak to Demomark? Absolutely not. Was it Pod Demo Mark? Yes. Yeah. yeah. As far as they know, I am totally loyal to the Empire. And for your information, I am loyal to the Empire as long as the Empire makes sure they keep their end of the bargain. And get then get so we can get this planet up and moving. You can see the, the, there's like veins thrumming in the old man's face. He's like, this is a, it's probably been one of the most stressful days he's had since actual active duty combat because you can tell he hates the people he's been interacting with, with yeah. for the last 12 to 18 hours. <laughs> the, the my, thought process, my thought process is if we can get what we need to cause the least amount of pro problems and let him basically get away with the knowledge that he did, he wasn't responsible for any of this stuff happening and, you know, was against his will or whatever, you know, forced to do this stuff, the better off he is. 
Yes, just, um, I'm sure you can be very convincing that we tricked you. We deceived you. We had papers that yes. were uh, for falsified. You have a paper trail. You are completely deniable in all of this. You just have to um, make sure that... Well, we have to make sure that you don't catch up to us. <laughs> yeah. And all, all while this is happening, we're making our way toward the mounts. All right. The... um. His screen goes dark again, and you hear him calling out to someone else. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, kidney stones, I think. Just give me a minute, minute more. Oh, man. The uh, the screen comes back on and says, I don't have a lot of time left. I'm just telling you. We're coming for you. Get what you need and get out. If I catch up to you, I got to put on a good show. And for me, a good show means winning. You understand, boy? Absolutely, Marshall. All right, and son. I appreciate the um, fair warning. All right, son. Good luck. Don't forget to delete this communication. No, oh, no. It's completely encrypted. Don't worry. Ah. Marshall out. You're, uh, you're, you're, the screen goes dark and everything comes back to life in the moment you're in. You can you now have full vision in your helmet as you guys are walking towards the grass ca uh, cages. Kidder has been walking alongside you said, and yammering to the rest of the crowd. He's like, man, the Marshall is real pissed. Like, he's been filling my ear with all kinds of crap for the last fucking six hours. He is not having a good time. Uh, Y'all are uh, in real trouble. And mm, Yes. <laughs> um, and since you have arrested us, how much do you want us to... How convincing do you want to be that we have escaped your custody? Do you have stun settings on your weapon? No, I don't know. I got ability to knock you unconscious. I got a stun weapon. Well, all right. I only uh, got a 13 on my bluff, but I say yes. As <laughs> 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 I unfold my assassin rifle. <laughs> yeah, he says, uh, I, there are uh, recording devices all over this place. Now, most of them are just there to monitor like plant growth and changes in the various environment, but... They will catch whatever we're doing here. I am leading you, as you see my gun is still out, towards... He points to a shed with a lot of um, locks on the door, toward that supply shed where you were going to be detained. And before we get to that door, I need to not remember your leaving. Now, do we understand? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. All right. What are you guys doing to poor Kidder? Okay, it's just him and us, right? Um, you see that like the, the two robots that uh, came with him have been following at a distance. He's like, the pilot drones are probably going to have to go. So. Hmm. <sighs> okay. That is unfortunate, but uh, you can always repair them. Sure. <laughs> he nods. So, uh, weep skeep, if you want to stun him after I make a distraction and smack his gun out of his hand and then shoot to the pilot drones. Does Sounds sound like a plan. Good to everyone. Set my static art pistol to stun. All right. In a quick maneuver, um, since Kidder is not going to resist, and the um, the pilot drones are literally they're just that piloting drones that are being repurposed for a legal purpose now. Weepskeep, you basically knock Kid around on a single blow, and and Geist, it only takes two shots to take out the two drones. They fall over, uh, beeping, splorking, and making noises uh, of a squee variety, a la Magnus Robot Fighter, leaving you guys there at the edge of the gates, next to the Grest pens. The, grest, the Grests are looking on with interest. Uh, can I see any of the recording devices? Uh, you can see like some distance, like yeah, you can see a few of them. Like they're not exactly hidden. 
Do we want to shoot those out with sniper rifles? I mean, you care. It would put on a good show, but it's up to you. Like for me, I rolled profession dancer to make my um, my choreography, fight choreography, look real. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> I got a twenty-one. Sure, I'll take pot shots. All right, you go full action movie, and then uh, then Essex takes out his gun and begins firing at the um, the 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 cameras. Um, Rule, mount up. <laughs> Always wanted to say that. All right. Go to the supply shed and see if we can find saddles in um tack. All right. You um you take Potch out of the cameras and mm-hmm. then everyone heads to the supply shed. The supply sheds are unlocked here. Not there's no one to steal. This planet is completely peaceful. There is no criminal element here. <laughs> Except us. <laughs> Except for you guys. And you do and see do indeed see that there are saddles and tack uh designed for these um basically large bird lizard aliens okay grab it and use life science to make sure i saddle them up properly all right as you step toward the grests uh they their heads and necks begin to like fluff out and uh, the feathers on their their necks begin to shake as all their mouths open and hissing <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> Is there a diplomacy or some kind of check that we can do to, um, like, lure them down, calm them uh, down? I believe there. Them? <laughs> yeah, let's see. What, what what do we go with for that? I don't think we've actually had to deal with actual fucking critters yet. Yeah, how do we handle these animals? Um, can I intimidate them? I don't into think this? that's a skill in this though. <laughs> Actually, uh, survival. Sure survival does it. Survival, you can survive in and make your way through almost any kind of wilderness, follow trails and tracks, deal with mm-hmm. wild animals. If you scroll down on Hephaestus, yeah, it's uh, handle animals under survival. All right, well then. As a move, survival actually, you use survival to improve the attitude of an animal with an intelligence score of one or two. Oh, yeah, yeah. these are indefinitely in animals with intelligence scores of one or two. The base DC <laughs> to handle an animal is 10 plus one and a half times the CR of the animal. This may All be right. adjusted by the GM to reflect other circumstances. I rolled a 24. Okay. <laughs> Fucking A, <laughs> <Hey>, Jeff. <laughs> uh, all right. Essex basically sh- whips his, sh- his saddle over his shoulder, steps into the pen, and begins to bowl his stride as if he belongs there. The animals begin to shake their feathers and hiss at him, but since he does not seem to be kowtowing to them, they immediately begin to um, be uh, obsequious to him. Like The the feathers retract. Uh, One of the nearby ones basically like squats down and they like, they once they're like convinced you are not afraid of them, they kind of get afraid of you, and they squat down to the ground, and a couple of them lay their heads down on the ground to be even more submissive. I will, I will look for the more alpha male of the group, and right. or the alpha, don't care if it's male or female. The All right, you, you figure out that the females are the larger of the, uh, of the species, and you find one that is not necessarily laying its head down, but has basically squatted down, but it's still giving you the stank eye. <laughs> but that's the one I will actually approach and try to um, saddle and approach. And once I get up there, I will give it a little, like a little piece of, um, and I'm sure in spot shed, there was some kind of like feed or something that they eat. Uh, there is a lot of dry synthetic meat in there. Then I'll give, I'll bring some of that and give them, give that one, one. Or, or at least you think every, it's synthetic. <laughs> and give everybody, and tell everybody else to, um, whoever you approach that you're going to ride, please give them a piece of meat. All right. Can I just ride with somebody? You can ride with me. We're both pretty light. I'm what's your survival? Oh, how, how, what's your survival? How good are you? I, I rolled a thirty-one. Yeah. Okay. Because I have twelve. Uh, I'm awful at it. <laughs> right. I don't like animals. They don't like me. We both know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, for you, it's like riding, you know, a cousin. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> It'd be like mounting up a gorilla. Weirdly, oh. they don't respond at all um, to Weepskeep in a hostile manner. 
They just but chill? They... <laughs> but neither do they, like, do their submissive thing to with her. They, they, they treat you like a plant. <laughs> okay. So I'll need you to make another survival check to convince them that you are a person. Oh, well, good, because I just rolled it. All right. <laughs> and it was a natural 20. Ah, sweet. Oh. So 25. Right. Um, you realize <laughs> that the only way to really get, get these guys to pay attention is to give them a good thump around the the the, the hearing I told canal. I should have just intimidated them into it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, after you, like, give one a good whack on the side of the head and notices you, it its feathers flare out, but you stare it down rather quickly. As you see Geistan Valgorth mounting up, you uh, you feel a gentle scratch by your leg. He's like, hey, uh, that lizard stole my ride. Do you mind if I... Um... <clears throat> by me? Yeah, you. It's Marcus. Who's this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. I suppose. Just uh, <laughs> don't be weird. I'm never weird. What are you talking about? Don't eat my uh... leaves. <laughs> They're no full around the pits. They're full of catnip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. After placing the cat on the saddle and saddling up yourself, the three grass that you guys have taken, um, basically begin to submit to your will rather easily. They're fairly well trained, and they're ready to ride. Um, you a map was transmitted to you by the marshal in his last little burst there. And you see that the dome is 20 kilometers across. No. I give the, the grist their head. Let's ride. <laughs> All right. The rest, of the, the rest of the crew, like, watch you guys go. Like, some of them are just sort of scratching their their ass and, like, like w watching the whole thing. A couple of them are like, hey, we should get those guys. They're like prisoners or something. And they knocked out, they knocked out Kidder. Like, I don't give a damn about Kidder. He's an asshole. <laughs> as is the last thing you hear as you guys head into the vast forest inside this dome. And I got to take a little bit of break. A little break. We'll, we'll be try. back after this quick message. Thank you. Jeff is our uh, sponsor. A quick word. Mm hmm. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> back in the day. That was a noise. <laughs> Uh, can, you can type out mm hmm. It's mm -hmm. M M H H M question mark. It's an affirmative noise. That's not a word. You can't look that up on Google. I mean, mm -hmm. you can. You can. Uh, yeah, I probably can, actually. It's probably even GIFs. <laughs> yeah. Not we're GIFs. Riding, we're riding lizards. Yes. You speed off uh, from shoot guns in the air. Sure. The uh, the grests uh, begin to run uh, swiftly into the forest. They um, don't keep their eye on the road very much. Uh, you kind of have to like veer them back onto like what is clearly the mo uh, um, a path that has been used by the caretakers, uh, the robots, and the workers out here. Well, but they are. Is it faster? Is there a, a path of most resistance that is a beeline to where we no, need no, to go? Uh, you are trying to do the beeline, I assume. That was my assumption. Yes. Um, and the but the grass seem to be distracted by other animals that are in in the uh, in mm. the environment. You see, there's a lot of like. Um, uh, insects, uh, pollinators. There are there are bird species here. You see that you can tell that there are a number of um, small grazers about, uh, just from occasionally running across spore. And you also see that there are um, some very large tracks that you occasionally run around on the road. The uh, the grass long necks basically just. <laughs> are always moving and their heads always sniffing at the air. They occasionally snap at insects in the air while they're running. It's like uh, they don't care where they're going as long as you keep steering them in the direction you want to go. They yeah. are 
or animate, um, curious uh, legs <laughs> that are taking you um, across the dome. If any time my grest tries to like veer off after prey or something, yeah, I'll I'll pull it back and I'll give it some um, I don't know space jerky. <laughs> I, I bought right. some of that human jerky, the synthetic human jerky. Oh yeah, well yeah. Um, the the grest will eat literally anything you put in front of its face, um, even even inanimate objects. It will at least taste before it lets fall out of its beak. Its head is literally on a swivel, like it can do the. Its uh, neck bones can turn all the way around and face you. Mm. Sometimes they do when they're trying to snap at something that's going over your shoulder. This place is very rich in organic life, uh, this experimental dome. So insects as, as large as your thumb and occasionally your fist uh, leap off tree trunks and zoom across the path. Uh, you guys have been going, have been awake steadily for the last... Um, about a lot, the last 20 hours or so from your time of departure to, uh, from the safety zone to the dome here. And you guys have gone to a, through a couple of combats. And I know you're probably depleted on uh, spells and things like that. Are you guys going to bother to take a break? You know that from what you gathered from what the marshal was doing, he had been delaying their departure to come after you on the other uh, transports as long as he could. And, and we that, know how long that takes as well. Yes, yes you do. So while you have uh, a 20 hour advantage on them, you can settle for a 12 hour advantage if you guys want to rest. Um, can I take I'll take a minute, if, we're, if we're, we're talking about this, I'll take a minute to scan the environment with a spell just to make sure the weather's not going to fuck us up for the next 48 hours. All right. The weather here is perfect. Perfect. <laughs> the right amount of light, the right amount of rain. For an environment like this, everything is pristine. Absolutely mm. unassailable. We're, we're inside the dome again, right? You're inside, yeah. You're inside basically a uh, massive hothouse. Looking at the map that we were given, does it look like that when we get to the entrance to the tunnel system, there's some place to kind of put up shop, maybe for just for eight hour for a rest? Um, yes, it looks like there is. In the center of the dome, there seems to be a science station, and and on the the edge is where you're heading. There appear to be like uh, work worker stations as well. How fast are these grists running? They they run at about a speed of fifty. Like, oh, they're wow. not. Yeah. And we've got what you said twenty kilometers. Yeah, twenty kilometers across. So in an hour, we would be to the end, right? Yeah. Well, closer to an hour and a half if these guys ran full speed the whole time. Why don't we, uh, why don't we? Not 50 miles per hour, 50 per round, by the way. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, no, okay. it, would be, it, would be, it would be more than an hour, sorry. I was very like, shit, just get to the tunnel. They basically can, these grests can do basically an eight minute mile, so it would. <laughs> okay. I so. feel like either one is fine for me. I could just do a short rest and be good to go, or a long rest if people need replenishing daily stuff. Mm. Mm. Well, we just leveled, um, so I was I would suggest let's get <clears throat> get to the tunnel and then we can rest at lizards and ourselves. <clears throat> Um, as you guys begin, as you guys get to about the halfway mark, according to your maps, uh, you, you see your grests begin to grow restless and um, they begin to like their their heads all begin to like look in the same directions as you are, are 
are driving them along. Like all three of them are pointed toward a certain area of the forest. They're still running at the regular speed, but their neck, the feathers on their neck begin to frill out and you can hear them hissing toward the forest. What are these mounts called again? Grests. Grest. G-R-E-S-T. A grest. So I take it something's coming. Something. Maybe something that created those big those big tracks. Yeah. yeah. So did and we it, take the short rest instead of the long rest? Uh I believe we didn't rest. He, yeah, I believe Jess said he wanted to cross the uh the dome before you guys did the rest. Hmm. All right. Um, and um, as you are commenting on that, Geist, or not Geist, uh, Essex, you can hear uh, a thunderous boom uh, in, coming from the forest. And above the tree line, you can see the long, leathery neck of some creature uh, basically stick up its head and let out an extremely loud bellow. Go, Shira! Um, audible up to three miles away. Oh, oh, he's reading a stat block. Something's about to happen. <laughs> That's why I said that. Mm. Oh, I lean forward, give the crest, uh, let it give in to panic. All right, <laughs> just just whisper threats into its ear. I want to eat you for supper. There's a, a I think the there's a check mile. for that. <laughs> Can we point towards this um, science station that you said was in the center? Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. We could take refuge there. Yeah. All right. Uh, You try to veer the grass toward the science center. Their heads basically swivel around, uh, still hissing over your shoulders as you move ahead. You're basically having to, like, steer them away from trees because they're just not looking where they're going anymore. As you head toward the science session, session, then suddenly the booming gets louder and more rhythmic as you are um, heading away and toward the science uh, stations. Uh, you see the, the you you hear the sounds of cracking tree uh, trunks as the um as whatever's coming towards you is barreling through the forest. This thing is uh, is is uh, huge. Then, as far as is it large or huge? Gargantuan. <laughs> oh, oh! I guess I was optimistic. <laughs> yes, you were. The um, and suddenly, uh, like when you look over your shoulders, you can see the creature—a huge, uh, six-legged, uh, dinosaurish kind of animal with a uh, large tusks horns it's got a massive tail swinging back and forth it is basically a, a moving hill that is stomping its way through the woods here heading towards y'all guys i rolled a one on life science i have no idea what this fucking thing is all right <laughs> can i make a life science check oh sure, yeah okay. i will also attempt or i will assist I'll do it too, but my thing gives me a uh, five DC lower. Mm. All right, I, I do assist. Okay, with a twenty-three. All right, what would what'd you get, Jeff and Aaron I, Hagen? I rolled a nineteen. All right. Um, the I creature. Got, I got a twenty-six. All right, then you definitely know this stuff, too. The creature you are looking at barreling towards you through the forest is called a Yarok. It is a massive um, megafauna that usually eats tree limbs, but is extremely territorial. Um, especially to things it considers like... Uh, predators, and predators in in the case of a creature like this are, you know, usually smaller creatures that bite. Mm. They um, they are common in the packed worlds, and it looks like probably out in space this way. They're 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 ubiquitous uh, on some planets. Some 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 planets even raise them for meat, and you're mm-hmm. guessing that's probably why they were on this ship, this uh, colony. <laughs> a lot of meat. It's a lot of meat. 
anything but, uh, that would let us basically um, make um, get out. So it's territorial. So is there any way that we can figure out to how to lose it and try to get out of its territory? Uh, you're guessing that the thing is probably considers the most of the dome its territory. It's probably had free range. Something, probably something the overseer has that can keep it in check. But you're you're unaware of how, exactly how they manage their animal population here in such a confined space. The you see that the grests. Uh, are all, all have a, like a, just a little bit of hardware implanted on their heads, but the purpose of it is a little is uh, nebulous at best, without actually patching into it. The the yarks, the yark itself, is a uh, since you guys rolled the life science has. I was going to give you some uh, some some tips about it since you guys know it has blind sense and uh, basically can track by scent entirely. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has damage reduction that is unbeatable. Ooh. <laughs> is resistant to sonic attacks. Um, it is not hampered by any kind of ham- uh, ham- hindering terrain, obviously. As you see, it basically just plowing through tree trunks. Uh, trample attack, and it has its own sonic attack if you're close enough when it gives its big loud bellow. And that's um, that's the long and short of the yark. Does it? So it probably is gaining on us since it can ignore terrain. Yes. Mm. But okay. uh, give me, give me a, give me another survival check to, to, to make all, all three of you people in charge of your grest. Let assist me there, Toker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I rolled a nineteen for a nineteen. All right. Twenty-four. 24. And what'd you get? With, uh, with, with uh, oh, sorry. 11. All right. <laughs> uh, Marcus says, I'll help. Let's see if he can do anything. With, uh, he does not. <laughs> he bites, assistance. he bites your, he bites your breast. He does not. <laughs> that did not help. <laughs> I got 29 with the assist. All right. Um, Geist and Essex, you guys are able to spur your your grest on to greater speeds. Um, basically, kind of leaving uh, Weepskeep and Marcus in the in the dust as they are trying to move around the various trees that are in the way of the uh, the path. There's actually mechanics for that if you're interested. Uh, to learn mechanics for a uh, thing that's going uh, sp- to spur spurring mount is an actual thing under. Riding a creature on survival. I thought it was kind of neat that they had all Oh, uh, well, let's hear it. Um, It'll come up again, I'm sure. As part of a move action to ride, you can attempt to spur your mount to greater speeds. If you succeed at the check, uh, which is DC 15, the mount speed increases by five feet for that move action, but the mount takes 1d3 damage, whether or not the check succeeds or fails. Sheesh. You can use this ability as often as you want, but if you fail the check by five or more, the mount becomes fatigued. All right. Mm. Literally spurring your mount. Yeah. Yeah. The mounts you guys have are clo- are moving quick along. Weepskeep, unfortunately. Your mount is uh, not responding or disobedient to you. It's also very distracted because a cat is clawing and biting at its flank. Um uh, <laughs> so Whenever we start this this uh, this combat, which is definitely going to happen, <laughs> eventually, the I'm I'm going to fast forward to that. Oh. Uh, you are going to be on the outside of the protective air, protected zone. So, basically, here's what happens: Geist and Essex spur their mounts on. It's not that much further to the science station. When you guys arrive at the science station, you see that it is got a pretty high uh, stone fence around it and an energy shield uh, f- in front of the door. However, it looks like whenever you get close to the energy shield, you see a light come on on the little metal panel and plant it into the side of your grest's head. The energy shield comes down as you, as you approach. Hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and once you guys are on the inside, the energy shield comes up again. 
Uh, shortly thereafter, however, you, you can still hear the bellowing and the booming, and you look around behind you, and you do not see Weepskeep until almost too late as uh, she bursts out of the uh, the woods around uh, surrounding the science station, and you can see the Yarak closing in in the distance. Let's roll initiative. Okay. Oh, good initiative, though. I am starting to think that maybe I need to invest in a sniper rifle. Hmm. It's the only like big. You can have my old one. Huh? Maybe we can pepper it enough to leave her alone. Yeah, a gargantuan thing called a Yarrick sounds like a few bullets will deter it from. <laughs> <laughs> not, not deter it from us, deter it from her to give her. Uh, yeah. Yeah, some space. All right. well, let me do my Yark initiative. All right. Weepskeep, what'd you get? 27. 27. Geist. 15. 15. Valgorth. 12. Well, then Essex. I rolled a 1, 11. 11. <laughs> Still doing better Show than Yark. Off. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Wait, you, you have a plus 10 to initiative? <laughs> Yes. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. Good go, Weepskeep. <laughs> the Yark is closing in. You see that there is a big, uh, large stone fence and an energy shield uh, across the, um, basically comprising the gate. How far away from that am I? Uh, you are about 150 feet. So double moving will only get me to 100 feet. Yeah, but that's uh, that's what I do. All right, one hundred fifty feet, guys. I'm glad I wrote um, the initiative. I accidentally wrote the initiative in descending order based on what you guys wrote. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, like I was shocked. <laughs> so we are in um, a protective dome. Not a dome. There's a fence with an with an energy shield that is the gateway. Bas- but basically, it's basically a fenced off area. There's a building behind you, that is the science station. And you see there are um, steps that go up to the I guess we'll call them battlements of the wall around the science station. <laughs> I can really not do anything. Um, my pistol probably won't get past its dr. Um, and uh, what was its DR? I said it was undefeatable. I didn't say it was high. <laughs> oh, yeah, he didn't give us a number. Yeah, that, no, I mean that's fine. I, I either, unless it's forty feet away, I'm only rolling mm. a D six plus mm. four. Still have a chance to do. Oh, still have a chance to do five. <laughs> okay, Up to five. Up to five, but that might just piss it off and not spook it away. It's already pissed off. You're 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 golden there. <clears throat> All right, I'll stand at the gate and uh, I'll do a triple attack. I'll shoot it three times. All right. Is this KAC or EAC? Um, it looks like EAC. All right, just one over my fire. Yeah, that's right. Well, it has a critical burn, so I'm guessing that it's EAC. The laser, though, right? Laser pistol. Um, yes, it is a laser. Okay. Okay, so this will be at a minus four. Um, uh, eighteen. Uh, it's a miss. Um, 21. That would, that, that would be a hit. And another 18. That's a miss. So then this one, I do seven damage to it. Seven damage minus it's Okay. Two All right. Damage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Skip, you see Geist uh, basically hop up on the, uh, the battlements and begin firing at the, uh, the oncoming Yorick. 
laying down a little suppressive fire for, from you that nicks it a little. Um, Valgorth, what are you doing? How far away is the monster from me? About 200 feet. Okay. Uh, well, then I, oh, my bad. I did not take away any um, range increment, so I'm sure none of those hit. All right. <laughs> Yay, I got my two hit points back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Valgorth. Mm. Yeah, then uh, I think the best bet is to draw my new assassin rifle and uh, take a shot at it. All right. Which I will do. Um, or wait, let's see. Um, the range is normally 60. Um, uh, are, are we saying that, are we saying that the, uh, that my rifle was already drawn or do I need to spend a move action to draw it? I don't have it already drawn. I'm sure you guys are, okay, got in, but I'm assuming you guys got into the, the fence and immediately drew down. So then we'll I'll spend you. a, I'll spend a move action to sniper it so that I have a 600 foot range. All right. Yeah. And then I'll shoot. Bam. Ooh. Ooh. Natural 20. All right. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I was like 33. That's a really high roll. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh. Oh, God. What does it do when I, sn- when I crit? This is a brand new rifle. Oh, yes. I just want to give out last week and I don't remember what it does. <laughs> what uh, is it called again? It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't have any critical effects. My other one did, I think, but this one doesn't. This, did, no? this one you can break it down so I can hide it like light bulk. I thought and, this one you could curse also. Oh no, that's the uh the attachment mod it's got on it. Mal- malediction. Yeah, yeah, it's got the malediction mod, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So once per day when you successfully attack a foe with a weapon with malediction fusion, as a reaction, you can cast bestow curse on the target as a spell like ability oh, nice. um, this is not provoking attack of opportunity if the weapon with this fusion has an item level of 14 or higher that doesn't matter um, uh, nothing happens okay so I can choose malediction but that's not a critical effect okay uh, are you and choosing I'm, malediction I might I, mean, I can't remember what bestow curse does in Starfinder. oh gosh good question <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me get to my let me get the spells. Malediction. Uh oh, god damn it. Every time I click on the first one, it's like Star Jammer, and I'm like, it the ads no! pop up in front of everything. And I'm like, I want archives of Nethus. Yeah, I'm gonna do that because I can decrease an ability score by six or minus four penalty on attack roll saves, ability checks, and skill checks. Or I could give it a uh, 50-50 chance that it'll act normally or take no action. Those are all great. But the, the surefire one's going to be that. So I think he gets a gets a save. Right. I'm going to use my reaction to do malediction. Um, Ugh. Sorry, go ahead. Whatever the save is, I failed it. I'm just going to... It's, it's, a, will, it's a will save. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I'm going to permanently give him a minus four to attack roll saves, ability checks, and skill checks. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> I thought it was a minus six. I could do a minus six to one ability score. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or a minus four to all of those things. Oh. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. the 50-50 chance that he does nothing is nice, but it'll be our luck that he rolls high every turn. And uh-huh. the, the <laughs> minus four is a surefire thing. Yeah. How much damage did you do on your crit? I haven't haven't rolled that yet. Uh so it's double I just do I double the dice, double the amount in this I one. I think it's both. No, I mean like do I double do I roll it and double that number or do I double the, the I, roll? I've been just letting people decide what they want to do. Like uh, yeah. you wanna roll if you wanna roll the dice twice, that's fine. If you want to roll the dice and double it, that's fine. I don't care. Well, I'll actually roll real dice for this. There's just not a, a way to do it on best years. To be like, oh, give me crit damage. <laughs> uh, fuck yeah. 16, 20, 30, 30, 36 damage. 36, spam. All right. Um. Yes, you, you, you put a big hole in this month on this charging monster and 
you and, and then you fire off that curse. You can um, see its eyes kind of turn black uh, briefly as the spell takes hold, and the thing begins lumbering um, more clumsily, more more recklessly, more firstly uns- unskillfully. Yes, and Essex, your goal. Okay. Uh, a 20 to hit. 22 hit will hit. A EAC? Yeah. All right. Yep. That'll hit. All right. That is, uh, of course, I was using my sniper rifle at six. I can shoot up to 500 foot. So. Move um, action. Yeah. So I can only shoot once. Yeah. And. Damage. Which, Jeff, is yours unwieldy, too, or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's a sniper rifle that's not unwieldy. I think there is, unless you get to extremely high levels. Yeah. So it's a, um, 10 plus, let me see, 8. 10 plus 8, and this is force damage. All right. Oh, 18. All right. Yeah. <laughs> like, m- math. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Uh, and now the Yarrick goes. It The Yarrick stumbles forward, uh, covering the distance. It attempts to trample you and Marcus Mahogany. You get the choice here since you're driving the, the Grest. You can take the damage or attempt a reflex save to take half damage. If you take the damage, you can make a uh, attack of opportunity against it. Um, but you will take the, the damage. If you t- attempt the reflex save, you can ha- at least take half damage. Mm-hmm. I wonder what the person who likes to get hit is going to do. I don't know. She yeah. also has evasion. Oh, so she'll yeah. take no damage. That's uh-huh. what I was. That's literally my thought process there. I didn't and know you like, had an Also, you know, just got hit a bunch. Oh yeah. So I think I'm gonna roll. But you should have been able to do the ten minute rest while we were on the transport because it took us six more hours to get here. Yeah. So you should have okay. got your stamina back. Well, then I will spend that resolve point. <laughs> oh. Okay. Cool, then. Um. Mm. Ah, Fine. I'll take the damage. Taking the damage? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you hear a loud yowl from behind you as Marcus attempts to leap off the back of the damn grass. You see him uh, flop down and begin like doing that, uh, you know, that terrified cat run where they are not looking graceful at all. They're like, doing that ah kind of fucking bullshit. <laughs> the cats that knock over everything in the kitchen because yes, a that, feather that fell behind them. <laughs> all right. Um, so yes, the thing, <laughs> the yard basically tramples over you as it's heading toward the thing. Uh, the 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 science station, and let's see, what is his D4s? All right. D4s, you'll be fine. It's definitely not like what? eight or ten of them. Yeah. It's only three. Oh. <laughs> Plus what? Uh, uh, 21 damage. <laughs> okay. That's right. actually pretty good. And let's see. Um, and so for my attack of opportunity, 27. All right, your grest is badly wounded during this trample. <laughs> oh, pobrecito, I'm so sorry. Does a 27 oh, hit him? Your cat is partially wounded during this. 27 does hit him. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I was like, this is what we came to talk about getting hit later. Um, plus 12. Yeah. 16 damage. 16. 
All right. Uh, as you're being trampled under, you basically uh, whip around and crack one of the one of the grass legs with one of your powerful fists. It lets out a bellow. The Yarix leg. Yes. Yeah. It lets out a, a not a not uh it not attack significant bellow, so nobody has to make a save just yet. <laughs> well, that was his turn. It tramples as a full attack action. Um. And let's see. It stops at the wall. Um, but only because the wall is sturdier than it looks. You see uh, stone uh, crack all over it as the uh, the yark slams into it. You see sparks go off as it part of one of its legs tries to pierce the barrier. And it lets out a yowl of pain. Uh, take some damage from that. All right. Um, and we're back to the top of the round. Weep Skeep, you are back on the stage. You're up, you're, you're up front. <laughs> um. So uh, distance-wise now, how far is it away from me? Let's see. About 20 feet. <laughs> oh, cool. How far would it be before she could go through the shield, through the, um, the force field? Um... Is it even safe to do with it right there? About, basically, it's 20 feet, and then the Yark standing between you and the door, which is 20 more feet, 40 feet, before you can get to the shield. But you you neither need one of them to bring their grest back around or get your grest up to it. Mm Mm-hmm. And mine is hurt. Is it like it can't move hurt? No, no, it's not like crippled or anything it's just hurt. okay it, it's just badly badly it's badly ruffled <laughs> mm-hmm. this is what I want to do but you can't do that in this game are you trying to legless up its back tail or... <laughs> no um, you can't move attack and then move again I don't think so in no. this unless game. you're hasted We'll have, to wait for, we'll have to wait for Starfinder 2 for that one. Yeah, then I will. Uh, I think I can. Oh, but I already used my reaction, didn't I? But your reaction doesn't take away your swift action, does it? It but takes I away your you swift. Have to, you have to have uh, spring okay. attack to move, attack, and move, right? Uh, no, haste. it's haste, because I have a oh. haste circuit. I just don't remember what it takes to activate it. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at it right now. Let's see. Um, it is a swift action. Oh, okay. Cool. So I can't do that. Well, you no, because that was that was last round's reaction. Correct. Yeah. And now it's a new round. Okay. So I'm gonna swift action activate my haste circuit, and then, uh, I'm gonna move up to this thing and I'm gonna hit it. Move up to it. Mm-hmm. Because right. isn't it between me and the door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know if you're like trying to go through it to get to the, through the door. <laughs> well, I mean, I want to do that, but first I want to attack it before I go through the door. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. That's why she's wanting to use the haste so she can move, attack, and then move again. Mm-hmm. All right. And I'm sure that at some point I will be taking some sort of attack of opportunity for going through it. Yeah, but only uh, after. Uh, so twenty eight to that hit. Way. Lovely and oh shit, I forgot to say it. I want to use my, uh, I want to use. We always assume that you want to use your entropic strike unless you yeah. tell us otherwise. Yeah, it's fine. Because I want to use all <laughs> both of them. All, two, really... all both of the entropy points that I have right now. Oh, uh, okay. What dice do you roll for that? It's a d4. Oh, it's, it's just a d4. d4. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what's, do, you, do you have any other damage dice that you're rolling? Yeah, it's 2d6 plus okay. 12 is what I normally roll. And then, I, like, for each injury point, I add a d4. Well, what'd you get? So, 23 damage 23. this time. Right. And now I will, uh... oh, shit, yeah. I were mean, any, wait, were any of your D sixes terribly low? I'm asking for. Yeah, one was one was a one. 
Okay, I'm going to use uh, a temporal anomaly to change her one to a six with one of my paradoxes. Okay, so add five more damage. All right. Thank right. you. And then uh, I guess I'll move to the door now, taking that attack. All right. The as you move through its legs, the uh, the creature attempts to um, stomp you. It's got a minus four to attacks, right, Toker? Minus four, yeah. All right. Attempts to stomp you as you go through its legs. I rolled a thirteen. Still got a pretty good attack though. Um, so that's minus four. Uh, that's still a twenty-nine to get you. Oh God. Oh that? yeah, that gets me. Sure does. All right, and I have lost the dice that I used for damage. Oh, here they are. Durr. And those are very low numbers. No, they're not. They're not. Well, okay, they're low numbers. Uh, <laughs> uh, does that does that curse uh, take away from damage at all, or just an no. attack skill saves? Attacks, attacks, saves, ability checks, skill checks. Gotcha. All right. All right, so this attack does 21 points of damage to you as you go by. Nice. Um, it also, basically, since you're on the grest, it uh, it also hits the grest, too. But that's just enough time for the grest to cover the distance. Uh, you see the little light on the side of its head activate, and as it collapses, uh, uh, unconscious and dying on the opposite side of the fence, basically you slide into home base, as the fence closes behind you. Ooh. Geist. Uh, she's inside. It's right there at the gate. Yep. We could, uh, we could leave it be. We could leave it be. It will probably get bored on its own. Fuck that. Shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Did Marcus make it through? No, he is still outside, still um, running off into a different direction. He, you dumb uh, dummy. You're supposed to come this way. <laughs> Marcus, yeah. hunker down until it leaves. Ah! Uh, 25 to hit. Yeah, that's it. Uh, for 12 damage. 12 damage? Uh, 20 to hit. That EAC? will hit. KAC? No. EAC. Oh, that K EAC definitely. Uh, 10 damage. 10 damage. And definite miss with a natural two. Okay. Well, I kind of like this triple attack, but I don't know how much I'm going to be using it. You've used it twice already. Yes, coming in yeah. pretty handy to right about now. Valgorth. Uh, my cool stuff is still locked behind spells I've already spent because we haven't <laughs> rested yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I use a move action to reload my gun, and then oh. I'll I'll look over it at Weep in her her uh, beaten state and uh send her back in time just to hair to give her 17 hip or 17 stamina back well, yeah all right that's my go essex i am going to channel healing and i do i heal back 30 points to everybody oh okay well, yeah. within range gotcha I'm going to assume that I was with it, Rage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I make sure I get close to, like, her, um, rift or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Got hurt. This was unconscious. It gets, it gets healed for 30 points back also. Okay. Yeah. Well, then it's Ooh. back up and perky. Yay. Come to me. All right. And let's see. And now it's the Yarg's go. The Yarg, uh, you can hear the sound of its nostrils and taking breath, and then it lets out a powerful trumpet. Um, and I need everyone to give me a, uh, fortitude save. Mm. You mean reflex, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, natural 17. What if you fail it? All right. 20. 
Uh, what happens uh, if you fail it? Asking uh, for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> An 18 on my reflex. I mean, I'm on fort save. 18 on fort, 17 on fort. What'd you two get? I'm going to use a paradox to give myself a, a decent dice roll and no end up with a... <laughs> Do, my I have, like, sucks. <laughs> do we have bennies in this game? No. No. Ooh. <laughs> 17. 17. All right. For that. How about Natu- you? Deep, come on. Natural one. Okay. Oh, right. no. So, everybody who made the save, which is a 16. Yeah. Oh, thank okay. God. <laughs> uh, takes, let's see, 8, 13 plus 8, uh, 21. Takes 10 points of sonic damage. Those who fail the save take 21 points of sonic damage and and are deafened and off target for 1d4 rounds, which is two rounds. What does off target do? Like a minus two. Yeah, yeah, an attack penalty. Okay. (laughs) There it is. Targets. Conditions. Okay. It's on. I clicked it on. All right. You take a mouse to pin on attack roll. So that's easy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, you're on off target for two rounds and you cannot hear. Also for two rounds? Also for two rounds, yeah. So they can't get me with that again, huh? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. not, not for two rounds. Yeah. But actually, I can't use it every round anyway. I actually have to roll to see it. When it comes up again, all right. It might give you soft tissue damage. <laughs> all your cellulose will pop. You can't like hear a, it, but your brain does. But your brain does. <laughs> like a sperm whale's uh, blip, bloop. What do, what do they call that thing that the sperm whales do? Incubus. That's a deep cut incubus song, whale songs. Look at it. But in reality, sperm whales can uh, emit a 210 <laughs> decibel noise that can kill you. Animal facts with Frank. <laughs> so that would be on I'm gonna his squeeze pamphlet. It in there. I'm going to squeeze that shit in there. <laughs> the death click. Ah, yes. It's a click. That's right. <laughs> Just like one of those. Uh, frustrated tongue clicks that you know your mom I didn't <laughs> I was thinking of a group of mean girls in high school you know a death <laughs> click <laughs> Heathers oh yeah Heathers it's, 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 it's the Heathers <laughs> that's a deep cut movie I still listen to the musical version of that yeah but anyway. wait what movie uh, I... Heathers is that the name of the movie yeah yeah. Oh. Well, how can I watch the gas that murders somebody? <laughs> because I can't be certain, but that might have actually been a seven. And that's like, this is the very first set of dice that I ever had, the unicorn one. And the ones and the sevens look so similar. And the, the 20 is a unicorn, and it also looks like a two. And so... It's just really hard to tell <laughs> what this dice says. But either way, it's too late now. Yeah, well, you're deafened and off target. So it's your turn. It's your <laughs> turn. She doesn't hear us her turn. We move on to the next. <laughs> um, uh, also then, so for trying to attack this thing, I have to shoot at it now, I would assume. Yeah, you can run up the rampart and fire at it. Or you can actually, you can probably, you're guessing you probably fire through the energy shield. Yeah, I'm going to fire through the energy shield because I only got a 40-foot range on this uh, sonic pistol, Thunderstrike sonic pistol I have here. I mean, I hope we can fire through the energy shield because I definitely was. I was not going to go out past the safety net to help. Mm. (laughs) Well, there's ramparts above the fence as well. Mm. Yeah. But the good (laughs) news is, Weepskeep, you can shoot that pistol right next to your ear. Oh, And it won't affect you at all. Not at all. (laughs) <laughs> um, 26 against the EACD. I will do it. This here thing of a bobber. Alrighty then. Uh, 
That is a whopping six damage. All right. We out. Any other any other actions? Um, nope. Because uh, I'm thinking about next time going back out there because six is not enough. Did you add half your level? Yeah, it's it's plus four okay. for this okay. thing for whatever reason. <laughs> Guys. Um. <clears throat> How big is this thing? Gargantuan. Probably not. It's probably a terrible idea, though. Oh, flashbacks to Jeb. Run out and jump on it. Stab it. (laughs) I got got two stabby things now. It's true. You got one implanted and one on on your arm. And is it within range to me for me to do? Uh, I'll let you make a jump check to get over the wall. And that would be part of my trick attack? Sure. My acrobatics? Yeah. Okay, I'll drop my, uh, I'll toss my Sonic Thunder Strike pistol to Weepskeep so she could dual fist it if she wanted to, and <laughs> she didn't hear me say, hey, heads up, and it just bounces it's off clatter. of her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it clatters off her head. <laughs> uh, so that's a 31 to jump over. And right. make it flat footed. You, you got it. And um, quick drawing out my Doshkari advanced for a, a 14 uh-huh. to hit his flat footed KAC. Flat footed KAC. Ooh, that does not do it. I didn't think so. All right. Give me a give me a, another acrobatics check. To stay on it? Huh? To stay on it? Yeah. 26. All right, you're fine. All right. He leaps on. He tries stabbing through the thick hide of the Yark. However, it is very resistant to its uh, his blow. However, he manages to hang on to the back of the beast as it begins to um, get mad. Valgor. Uh, I used last round to reload. It's close. I don't think... Uh, Weep, how are you looking on stamina? I'm good. I'm only down 20. Okay. Uh, then I will... Uh, I'll just shoot the fucking thing, I think. Yeah, he's close enough where I don't have to snipe him, so yeah, I'm just gonna shoot at him. Blam! Ooh, 28. Yes. And... Oh, fuck yeah, 24 damage. All right, 24. And then I'll reload. That'll be my full round. That was a six, a six, and a four on 3d6. It's a pretty good roll for that amount of damage for me. All right, that's six. All right, drop the sniper rifle, pull out my artillery laser, and unleash. All right, unleash away. Roll to 17, plus 12, 29 to hit. That'll do it. All right. And I did 18 points of damage again. 18. This is fire damage. Fire damage, all right. Uh, Let's see. And uh, the Yorick. The Yorick begins to... uh, thrash and uh, stomp around, attempting to buck off of the uh, invader on its back. Could we have just left? They can't chase us now, right? Um, you, the bucking, however... Uh, we're, we're in a, a paddock, basically. Mm. The bucking begins to smash more and more things and more and more pieces of the wall as it begins to thrash around and basically it just basically here's what happens uh you guys ever see like uh a horse get so frustrated with biting uh, anim- uh flies that it will just lay down and <laughs> or pit 
or a pig. So yeah, this massive animal basically decides to roll over. So I need to use, I need your AC as I do a basically it's an attack with a minus four from your curse. And oh my gosh. And I rolled a one. So Yes! 26 <laughs> is my KAC. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a one. Uh, I will give you an attack of opportunity as this thing basically lay, sl- attempted to lay down on top of you, but slows down enough where it gives you the opportunity to make an attack on it. Go ahead. Uh, Natural 19 for 29. That'll hit. Unfortunately, it's not a trick attack, so that's Still 13 a damage. Hmm? 13? Huh? What'd you say? No, 3d4 weapon, right? Yeah, 3d4. 13 okay. damage. 13. 8. All right. He <laughs> slashed into the thing. It lets out another uh, yowl of pain. Um, realizing how incredibly... Well, not realizing. It's a big, dumb animal. But um, <laughs> Weavescape. The, the creature is laying down just outside the fence. I'm gonna come out and punch it. <laughs> it's... You lead through the barrier screen, which is flickering on and off from all the damage it's taken from the Yarrick smashing into the wall. Go ahead. Uh, can only do one attack, so 26. That'll hit. Oh. Yeah, only using one of them, though. Ooh. Uh-huh. Twenty-five damage. Twenty-five. All right. We just keep leaps out of the barrier, uh, moves across to where the yark is laying on its side, and uh, for the for 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 like I don't know how to describe somebody punching a gargantuan creature death, but let's just say you heart punch it, and it, <laughs> it gets out. It gives out a shudder and collapses unconscious. Oh, hooray! It's going to happen. I'm going to move my lightsaber and slice its belly open. In here, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> you hear a voice spring to life on, um, on some sort of uh, exterior speaker. It's like, what are you idiots doing? Trying to rescue our cat. <laughs> what the hell's a cat? <laughs> Another voice calls out. Oh, can never I, mind. We know what a cat is. Okay. Can I, can I stabilize the monster? Um. Yeah, oh, it's still, just got, slid uh, it it's still got a little bit of negative. Yeah, you can stabilize it if you like. Okay, I'm gonna stabilize it. All right. So we, because we promised that we weren't going to disrupt the environment, but I mean, we, we, we this is the best um situation here because it's now out of sit out of our hair, so we can continue on after we rest. All right. The um. After you stabilize it, the uh, you see a, a trio of um, workmen come out. One says, "Oh my goodness, my Yarrick. He walks out and, and, and begins like inspecting the creature. He's like, "Oh, it's still alive." Who are you people? What are you doing out here at the research station? This is Yarrick feeding time. We haven't put him back in the stasis yet. Well, he's not dead. You can see that, but he's pretty messed up. Yes, you we do get- apologize for that. We've had, uh, <clears throat> we are, we were riding the crest through this uh, environmental dome to get to the genetic dome. Unfortunately, uh, we caught the Yarek's attention. They did not tell us when we were leaving the environmental uh, landing platform that, uh, or the entryway, that it was your feeding time. They may not have known. The uh, the the fellow who you've been talking to like crosses his arms and says, "That stupid robot overseer." Ugh. He was malfunctioning uh, when we showed up. Um, Captain Kidder was uh, tending to him last we saw. The transport jockey. Yes, yes. He uh, he told us to just get on the crest and carry on. Oh, he's gonna break that thing, oh, man. <laughs> he um, 
He, he, he had says, come on inside the station. Uh, and you see a couple of workers come out with like other medical supplies for the yard as you guys are ushered in. You hear a yowl of um, pain as uh, you see a, another attendant um, wrapping wrapping up some bandages on Marcus, who is laying on a table. Oh, 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 hey, guys, the back door was open. Oh, good. You found him. Hello, Marcus. <laughs> Uh, this animal talks. Is that normal? Ah, uh, yes, yes. He is, in fact, our captain. Oh. <clears throat> so sorry, sorry to treat you so roughly, Captain. No, no, it's all right. Marcus stands up. He fluffs out his fur, and then relaxes for a moment. Report, crew. What is going on? <laughs> well, we have reached our. Uh... Our station, obviously, and we are hoping to get a little bit of rest before pressing on to our main mission. Excellent. Um, he, he turns towards the uh, towards the, the the attendant. Like, can you provide food for my men? Yeah, we got supplies. Come on up to the mess. Excellent. The cat leaps off the table. Fights so hard not to grin okay. at his uh, authoritative voice. Cat leaps off the table, lets out a grunt of pain, and then and then marches behind them to the mess. You guys are offered the, to to rest there and 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 fuel up on food. They tell you that your grass look um surprisingly not that bad, for especially since one got trampled. And uh, you. you guys can uh, re up all your spells and things like that as you rest. Anybody else need more healing? Nothing that a long rest won't fix. Yeah, I, I should be fine with a long rest. I'll also check the animals out. And if they need more help with the um, big boy, I can actually tell them I can actually help assist, bring it back up as long as they can make sure it doesn't attack us again. They say, yeah, we got, we got the, um, we got the inhibitors uh, recalibrated. Then I will actually start um, healing the creature. All right, um, heal the creature up. Do you and have eventually... access? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. It, it basically, it, eventually, it wakes up and like you see, it's really docile. So the the implants they have on it have it pretty sharply under control when it is under control. Um, you're guessing it, the the kind of sur the kind of surgery that it takes to do something like this is probably not necessarily terribly ethical, but it keeps people from getting trampled to death here in the dome, so. And these people don't necessarily have very enlightened views of animals. <laughs> Which is why they were so surprised that the cat talked. Um, do you have a communications array? <laughs> communications has been down for like, whew, hours now. Mm, that is unfortunate. I guess we'll have to hold off on, uh, Making a that, report. There was an emergency communique from the marshal. We assume we assume the overseer must have got it, but everything's been wonky since then. You do, you guys don't know anything. No, no. We were simply hoping to uh, make our report. <laughs> so we don't get many visitors out here, especially looks at everyone um, except for Essex, <laughs> it's like, especially uh, off-worlders. Yes, subcontracting. Oh, am I, okay. Am I right? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I've never been off planet myself. Though I'm thinking about becoming a becoming a shipping person one day if I can ever, you know, find a ride. <laughs> the um the other researchers begin to rib this person with dreams of leaving their rural crappy planet, but <laughs> beyond that. You, you don't have much in the way of uh, communication or or contact with the outside world again. And after you take your rest, you know that you're probably now that distractions have been made, things like that. Your your twenty hour lead is probably narrowed down to about eleven. All right. They uh, give thank you, you very much. Uh, we need to be on our way. All right. 
<laughs> they uh, they help you after they basically help you uh, saddle up your grass after feeding them, and they tell you good luck doing whatever you're doing maintenance. I re I, I reckon. Yep. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> and as you leave the uh, the crew behind uh, and head off to the other side of the dome, we will call it quits there tonight. Um, thanks for thanks for playing, everybody. Toker, do the do the thing. Yeah, thanks for running. This was fun. Yeah, homebrewdetritus.com. <laughs> Find all of our other shows. All right, that's it. That's it. W is <laughs> all the W's. Jeff is our sponsor. Any word? Bye.